A very good morning uh, to all our <coughs> participants this morning. And uh, very good morning and warm welcome to my colleagues, uh, YB Datuk Sri Mustafa Muhammad, a Minister in the Prime Minister Department, Economic. Yang Berbahagia, Tan Sri Abdul Wahid uh, Omar, Chairman of Busa Malaysia. Yang Berbahagia, Datuk Omar Swip. Chief Executive Officer of Bursa Malaysia. Yang berbahagia, Datuk Muhammad Nasir Ahmad, Chairman of CIMB Group Holding Berhad. Yang berbahagia, Datuk Abdul Rahman Ahmad, Chief Executive Officer of CIMB Group Holding Berhad. Mr. Jeffrey Hashim, Chief Executive Officer of CIMB Investment Bank Berhad. Mrs. Rosie uh, Rani Ajit, uh, Chief Executive Officer, uh, uh, CGS CIMB Securities Senam Rahat. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, Bursa Malaysia for inviting me to present a special address in today's session with regards to powering Malaysia plantation and commodities industry. A commodity is an uh, important contributor to the socio-economic development and play a very major role in eradicating poverty in Malaysia since the independence of the country. The agri-economy plantation sector comprises of uh, six commodities, uh, namely palm oil, rubber, timber, cocoa, pepper, and knaf. In 2019, uh, this sector contributed 6.1% to the GDP uh, and remained among the largest net exporter, along with the electrical and electronics and the oil and gas sectors. Being the top three uh, commodities, the palm oil, rubber, timber sectors contributed to 94.18% of total commodity export earning in 2019. Malaysia top three major export destination for agri-commodity products are the European Union, China, and the United States. Over the years, Malaysia and European Union has an excellent trade relationship where export and agro-commodity uh, agro and agri-commodity-based product uh, to the EU in 2019, where valued at Ringgit Malaysia 18.7 billion, a slight decrease of 2.040% uh, uh, compared to Ringgit Malaysia 19.09 billion in 2018. The main export were palm oil product valued at Ringgit Malaysia 9.58 billion, followed by rubber and rubber products at Ringgit Malaysia 6.55 billion and timber and timber products at 2.12 billion. Ladies and gentlemen, our country also continuously doing a promotional effort and strategy to strengthen the palm oil sector. Uh, KPPK, uh, through its agency, Malaysian Palm Oil uh, Board, MPOB, and also Malaysian Palm Oil Council, MPOC, organized very extensive promotion globally to gain and increase Malaysian palm oil market share. Few prominent promotional program under such initiative includes the Palm Oil uh, International Congress and Exhibition, PIPOC, and Palm Oil Trade Fair and Seminars, POTS. Such platform provide a lot of benefit, beneficial activities to interact and share information in various areas uh, pertaining to the palm oil industry. It also showcases the latest advancement in the industry. It's also reserved to present and reflect on the current issues associated with the palm oil industry. It's also uh, reserved to present and reflect the current issues associated with the palm oil industry, convey innovative ideas and critical thinking into single platform. Uh, Congrating oils and fat industry, 
players, marketers, traders, economists, nutritionists, government officials, as well as segments of the private industry to deliberate on the latest development and the way forward for the palm oil industry. Apart from that, engagement programs such as Business to Business under the MPOC initiative is continuously done to connect our local companies with potential buyers, importers, in order to expand business opportunity and subsequently increase the market share. However, due to the current pandemic, search program still continue to be conducted virtually to lessen physical contact. To boost export of palm oil resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic, the government under the Plan Jana Semula Ekonomi Negara, also known as Penjana, has given a take break in the form of 100% exemption on export duty on crude palm oil, uh, crude palm kernel oil, and also processed palm kernel oil. The incentive could attract not only local players, but also potential international buyers for palm oil import-export activities. We also lay our strategy to increase crude palm oil price. In principle, the price of the CPO is driven by the market price, which depends totally on supply and demand. However, some intervention into this system could indirectly help control the price in the market. Increasing local consumption through the implementation of biofuel program could play a vital role in controlling the palm oil uh, stock, which may indirectly facilitate in stabilizing palm oil price. The full implementation of the B20 program in the transport sector, along with the B7 program, in the industrial sector, we allow domestic annual palm oil consumption of 1.3 tons, million tons. Such move not only will boost economy, but also contribute to the increased use of uh, environmental friendly and sustainable energy source. Ladies and gentlemen, as an initiative to ensure and promote sustainable practice throughout the palm oil value chain, Malaysia subscribed to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, Agenda 2030, and agrees in principle to adopt the SDGs as the primary framework to drive and achieve higher sustainability commitment within the palm oil industry. <coughs> Malaysia is committed to sustainably produce palm oil and to ensure sustainable management of the entire palm oil supply chain become the accepted norms and standard for Malaysian palm oil. This will be achieved through the mandatory certification of Malaysia palm oil under Malaysian Sustainable Palm Oil Certification Scheme, which is also known as MSPO. It is ministry aspiration to ensure that all Malaysian palm oil exports are obtained from the sustainable source by the end of 2020. The Malaysian palm oil industry is governed by more than 60 national law and regulation, including the Land Acquisition Act 1960, National Land Court 1965, Environmental Land Conservation Act 1960, Quality Act 1974, Pesticide Rules 1988, Occupational Safety and Health Act 1977, and Law, uh, Labor Law and Wildlife Conservation Act uh, 2010. And in addition, there are 25 licensing categories throughout the palm oil industry supply chain to ensure the industry meet the strict requirement as set out under the MPOB Act. All these rules and regulations were abandoned in the MSPO as part of the requirement that needs to be followed by the industry intending to be certified. Currently, MSPO certification has been adopted as a mean for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics and Paralympic Games Sustainable Sourcing Code for Palm Oil. 
KPPK through MPOB and Malaysian Palm Oil Certification Council, MPOCC, has also been working with China Green Food Development Center, which uh, known as CGFDC, under agency under Ministry of Agriculture China, to jointly work on recognition of MSPO certification scheme under the Green Food Certification in China. It is our hope uh, that the world, especially the EU, will support and advocate Malaysia initiative with the MSPO certification scheme to produce more sustainably produced palm oil for the global market that will in turn recognize MSPO certification palm oil as a premier palm oil brand of choice, the world oil consumption. Furthermore, the MSPO standard encompasses of five P's of sustainability, which is people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership, which in line with the UN SDGs. In March 2019, to further reinforce the country commitment in pursuing sustainable oil palm cultivation practices, the government of Malaysia has agreed to cap palm oil cultivation area of 6.1 million hectares to put stop on conversion of permanent forest reserve area and pit land for palm oil cultivation, to further strengthen regulation and with regards to existing oil palm uh, cultivated on pit, and uh, to make available of all plantation map for public to assess for transparency. Ladies and gentlemen, on managing the deforestation allegation, we also plan reforestation and also rehabilitation uh, program. The Malaysian palm oil industry is currently focused on improving productivity and yield rather than expanding land for new planting. Malaysia reiterates its commitment made at the Rio summit in 1992 to retain at least 50% of the land area under forest cover. The area under forest cover in Malaysia is 55.3%. Uh, Apart from that, the ministry is also exploring the notion of regulating all palm planting on pit land and well, as well as a permanent forest reserve. The ministry also committed to plant 1 million forest tree species within the next 10 years, particularly in the degraded land in Sabah as well as the wildlife rehabilitation program which will be sponsored primarily uh, by the palm oil industry players. This is a commitment by the industry to make sure that oil palm will no longer be associated with the negative uh, connotation with deforestation actively and pursued by the international environmental bodies and the non-governmental -government organization. MPOC, in collaboration with the Sabah Wildlife Department, has agreed to initiate a survey project that aims to undertake a new population survey of the orangutan and uh, pygmy elephant in Sabah. This survey will bring together wildlife experts, scientists, researchers to take part in the, an extensive uh, study on the population of the state iconic wildlife. The continuous effort in making sustainable palm oil is a success. Cannot be achieved without the cooperation and commitment from all related stakeholders. Therefore, Malaysia hopes the close cooperation that has been established within Malaysia organization and the counterpart in the EU and its member country will continue to facilitate mutual interest in working together. <coughs> Malaysia through MPOB is working together with the Netherlands through IDH, the Sustainable Trade and Solaridad Network Asia, a limited on elevating uh, sustainable among shareholders. The, Sayang, uh, the Sayangi Sawit Ku or Love My Palm Oil campaign 
is a campaign initiated by KPPK to instill pride and appreciation of the palm oil and its attribute to our well-being and country. Since the launch of this campaign, KPPK have garnered a lot of support, not only the members of Malaysian palm oil industry, but also various organizations, associations, and the civil society. In debunking negative perception and to give greater impact in promoting Malaysia palm oil, Ministry has decided to elevate the current Love My Palm Oil campaign in ensuring that the good narrative of palm oil is promoted all over the world. It is without a doubt that our palm oil is a God gift commodity. As such, KPPK will continue to promote and highlight the attribute of palm oil under the new aspiration, Sawit Anugrah Tuhan. KPPK and its agency actively promoting our palm oil through numerous medium, including online web webinar, social media posting, as well as physical program such as food exhibition and cooking fair. Through all this effort, we may able to fully capture the attention of our target audience and spread the correct message about Malaysian palm oil. Ladies and gentlemen, with regards to filing of case to the World Trade Organization against the European Union, on July 1st, uh, 2020, the Cabinet has approved KPPK notation to proceed with the filing of Malaysia case against the EU at the WTA through the dispute settlement mechanism. KPPK is working together and closely with Attorney General Chamber, Ministry of International Trade and Industries, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources to prepare all necessary documents. Malaysia is planning to file the case by this year as per KPPK uh, press uh, statement dated 1st July 2020. That we are adamant steadfast in taking legal action against the EU on its discrimination toward Malaysia palm oil. Apart from that, Malaysia will also act as a third party in Indonesia WTO case against the EU uh, to indicate our support to other palm oil producing countries. And this will indirectly increase the pressure on the EU. Ladies and gentlemen, we are committed on our biodiesel program. Biodiesel program for domestic market was introduced to partially reduce dependence, dependency on fossil fuel and promote greater use of our abundant resources on palm oil, which the government believe will incur other spillover effects such as better crude, crude palm oil price, promote the use of high value added downstream products and technologies, CPO stock control mechanism, and promote cleaner environment. Biodiesel program will also contribute to the reduction of the greenhouse gases uh, emission. The biodiesel program was first introduced in transport sector via the B5 biodiesel program and later upgraded to B7 biodiesel program. Subsequently, the B7 mandate was extended to the industry sector that covers commercial and power generation. Meanwhile, the usage of the B10 biodiesel in the transportation sector made mandatory from February 2019 helped to promote higher usage of the cleaner fuel. <coughs> Currently, the B20 biodiesel program for transportation sector has already been introduced in Pulau Langkawi, a wilayah Persekutuan Labuan on January 1st and January 15, 2020, respectively. The B20 biodiesel program is planned to be rolled out in phases and to be fully implemented by June 2021. In addition, a government also planned to introduce the B30 biodiesel a program as early as year 2025, 
uh, subjected to readiness of the blending depots, technical verification by the vehicle manufacturers, uh, development of B30 biodiesel standard, and engagement with various stakeholders. On the rubber commodity, our ministry aggressively looked at latex glove promotion. Malaysia exported Ringgit Malaysia 17.3 billion of rubber glove in 2019. Malaysia is currently the world largest producer, capturing 65% of global market share. In order to maintain our status as the premier producer of rubber glove, KPPK through its agency, the Malaysian Rubber Export Promotion Council, or also known as MREPC, has been putting effort to support the rubber glove industry to increase visibility in international market. MREPC organized market promotion, promotion activities, which include particip uh, participation in trade show, organizing a specialized mission and educational seminars, as well as organizing buyer mission for international buyers. MREPC is also making greater use of digital platform to promote Malaysia rubber glove. Apart from continued focus on existing export market in USA, Europe, we are also exploring market with huge growth potential such as China and India as well as market that promising potential like the Middle East, South America and Africa. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a number of incentives has been made available by the government to further encourage rubber glove manufacturing in Malaysia. Apart from the pioneer status and investment tax allowance under Malaysia Investment Development Authority, MIDA, which provides 60% allowance on qualifying, uh, qualifying a capital expenditure incurred for five years for the manufacturing of safety or special function glove. The ministry through the MREPC has also allocated 20 million through the Automation and Green Technology Fund to assist and encourage glove manufacturer to adopt Industry 4.0 and automation technology in their manufacturing facilities. MREPC is also offering market promotion grant to Malaysian glove manufacturers to encourage them to participate in market promotion activities to promote their product in international market. We recognize that it is absolutely necessary for our industries to comply with global standard regulation and practices. One of the increasing important areas in, is the adherence to the international labor law and practice to sustainable production and manufacturing. In this regard, we are continuously putting efforts to enhance market confidence and acceptance on Malaysia agri-commodities, including rubber product. At the ministry level, we are encouraging industry members to comply with the international standard and regulation, practicing sustainable manufacturing, which include use of the renew renewable energy and green technology, adherence to international labor uh, practices, and undertaking awareness and educational activities to facilitate better understanding of Malaysia's sustainable production and man manufacturing processes. Recently, the government has taken a bold step uh, through COVID-19 movement control order to stop allowing foreign workers from entering our countries. And I know that it's very difficult for our industries, especially in the palm oil industry when we stop foreign workers from coming. And we try our level best to recruit the local and uh, we will discuss uh, and formulate the strategy later on on how we're going to address this issue. I know that there is some concern, especially from the MPOA that there is a great uh, problem that we are facing in terms of labor shortage. But we will look into this matter uh, and we will formulate the strategy to uh, um, craft a better plan. 
This move also indirectly encouraged Malaysian company, including the Malaysian rubber industry player, to enhance productivity and competitiveness through innovation as well as greater use of automation and industry 4.0. We want our industry member to reduce uh, reliance on our foreign labor, and this will also create higher skilled jobs with better pay for Malaysian workers which will contribute to the economy. The ministry, through the MREPC, has been in constant engagement with the Malaysian rubber product industry members to ensure that we are moving in the right direction toward complying with the international labor practices. The ministry realized that for the Malaysian rubber industry to remain competitive, the industry must put emphasis on the innovation and research and development. Among others, this will lead to discovering new products, new technologies, and new uses of the product and improve quality. All these initiatives will enhance our rubber industry competitiveness. For example, there is a scope for further R&D into rubberized road, a given is a bit uh, rather higher cost. But once the cost become competitive, Malaysia can also export rubberized road technology to other country in the world. On the manufacturing side, particularly on the glove manufacturing sector, the industry players are now in the midst of transforming their manufacturing facilities to be more automated to ensure the product that we produce are more consistent in quality and cost competitive. The ministry through MREPC has established an industry linkage fund to encourage rubber product industry members to undertake market-driven research which will benefit the industry in terms of innovation as well as R&D. So ladies and gentlemen, as we can see, the government and our ministry are very serious to help our uh, commodities player, especially in the uh, palm oil industry and uh, rubber industry, where we put a lot of effort and we strategize our plan, but we also need the help from the corporate sector and also consumer to basically to help us to boost the usage, not only uh, outside our country, but also the uh, domestic consumption. For example, if we look at the uh, palm oil uh, consumption, we have about 32 million population. Can you imagine if, let's say, every household buy one liter a month of uh, palm oil or cooking oil? We can actually increase our domestic consumption, and this will also indirectly help our country and also our uh, palm oil industry player. So we have to start from our home. So I hope that let's not just put the burden to the government, but each one of us, a fellow Malaysian industry player and the consumer, we work together to help our country and to bring our country to the next level. With that, thank you very much. May God bless all of you.